This presentation is about Esperino, made by a guy called Gordon Williams, who is British. And it's a very small microcontroller, as you can see here, if you know how big a two pence is. If you don't, then I can show you the real thing here. This is how it looks. And, um, and you might wonder, hold on, what is a microcontroller? <laughs> so. Uh, I'm just going to give like a short introduction to that first. Uh, microcontrollers are really, really tiny computers that are used everywhere, like microwaves and uh, and the early cell phones and things like that. And uh, they can do very small things uh, very efficiently. Uh, efficient meaning they draw very little power, and they normally don't cost very much either. And uh, something that happened. Some years ago, anybody know the date, is that Arduino came. And Arduino is kind of a microcontroller revolution because it's an open sourced hardware platform and software for doing microcontrollers. So when Arduino came, it became much more simple to do um, hardware hacking on microcontrollers. Uh, you can write in a C style programming language and it's quite easy to learn. So that's a little bit where the microcontroller history comes from when I'm starting to present this uh, Esperino. And the difference between Esperino and the Arduino uh, is that Esperino runs JavaScript. And I think that's much better because we are many people that don't know how to do C and we could maybe easily learn how to do enough C programming to make an LED blink or something simple, but uh, why not do it in JavaScript? And also, it turns out that there is actually some advantages to doing it in JavaScript. So this uh, got me really excited, and uh, there was... Um oh, hold on. Sorry about that. I'm going to find this. I got really excited when I saw the Kickstarter project for this thing. Um, so Gordon Williams, he uh, started by writing software. He wrote a specific firmware for Arduino boards that could run JavaScript. And uh, he did that for, for quite some time, I think, and tried to make it very efficient and very small and so on. And he came to a point where it became a, a big problem that every time he needed to do a driver, he had to write it in plain text. Uh, so the drivers are in JavaScript, and, and the JavaScript is, is uh, not being compiled into something else. It's actually being uh, just-in-time uh, run inside the microcontroller. So that has its advantages, but the big disadvantage is that it takes more space than binary data, and if you use a driver that's written in JavaScript, it's going to be maybe sometimes up to 3K compressed. And uh, the typical uh, memory for pers persisting on a microcontroller is like 8K, I think. So there you always, you almost used up everything. And this was one of the reasons where he decided to go for launching an own uh, board so this is this is also an Arduino style board. Um, Arduino, I think you call it Arduino compatible, or something like that. Uh, y you have to be careful how you use the term Arduino. But but the microcontroller is compatible with Arduino, and it's a beefed up microcontroller that has, I think, it has uh, 16k of persisting. Um, flash, and it has 64k, amazing, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> instead of, uh, I think, 16 uh, for the normal uh, RAM. So you can, you can run much bigger programs here. <laughs> uh, and so normally, I, th I think if you did it in C, uh, you would get a much smaller program, and you would also maybe be able to do a smaller footprint in RAM. So it is a little bit 
because it's JavaScript that you have to do this, but it turns out uh, when he finally found out the right model to do this Esperino that it doesn't consume so much, uh, I mean it doesn't, doesn't cost so much and it didn't become much more expensive than a normal Arduino board. In fact, it's cheaper. Um, so that's cool. I think uh, this is a really exciting platform and, and uh, first it was the firmware and the, so and the, the, s the software Esperino, but the Kickstarter project launched this specific hardware and there's nothing wrong with running it on, on other compatible hardwares, but it, the good thing is just that it has more memory. That's, that's the main thing with this. So you're familiar now with what uh, microcontrollers and Arduino and an Esperino, right? Um, and if you want to get a little bit more technical, this is an ARM chip that's running here. So that's what you typically found in, uh, in cell phones and still do sometimes. Uh, so it's a little bit, it's c capable of doing some extra advanced stuff in comparison to to maybe the AT tiny processors, for instance. But I'm not a microcontroller expert here, so... <laughs> Anyways, I will tell you a little bit about the board now and the features. It has two buttons. Uh, it, it has the user button and the reset button. So the reset button is for resetting the, f the whole thing, you, you kind of reboot it, but you can also, if you hold the user button and you press the reset button, then you can set it into uh, flash firmware mode, and then you can update the firmware from your computer. Um, and, the, sorry, and the user button is also something you can use in your software, so you have one input button, <laughs> which is sometimes enough. <laughs> and sometimes, of course, you can connect other things to it. It has an RGB LED, so uh, actually, it's not one, it's three LEDs that's sitting next to each other. If you kind of cover it with something like a paper or some diffuser, then you could maybe blend the light to, to be different blends and make it kind of white or some other nuance. But, but when you have it like this, it's just three different colors. It has a port for, um, for a battery, so you can... If you have some kind of, like a cell phone battery or something similar, you, you could probably just hook it up here if it has the right voltage. And it tolerates many different voltages, this board. And it has a, a prototype area where you can solder, for instance, a Bluetooth chip. And there is a Bluetooth driver as well. Oop, sorry. USB you use for communicating with the computer, mainly when you write the code and you send it over to the Esperino or you write it immediately into the uh, command line interface. It has an SD card. Yeah, there we go, Bluetooth. So actually what I said before, sorry, <laughs> I will correct myself now. The SMD prototype area is not the same I'm not quite sure what SMD, do, do, does anybody in the audience know about SMD? Okay, well, so I'm using the slides from, from Gordon, so there might be some things where I'm a little bit shaky. Suffice to say, it's a very flexible board, so it has many options. Uh, now you see it a little differently. This one doesn't have the pins that, that this one has. and uh, And the idea is that with microcontrollers, this is not the only situation, other microcontrollers as well, they normally, either they have pins here, or there's just room to solder pins here. So, and, and you c it can either be pins, or it can also be female connector headers, where you then can stick a pin in. So it's for connecting stuff like servo motors, that's really handy to have like, the, the pin headers lying here, so you don't have to solder and resolder and, and things like that. Um, so it has headers for, for server motors, that's the inner ones here. The ones out here and here are, are, are general, so to say. You can, you can use them for input, output, anything in general, but, but the ones there are for server motors. Anybody knows what server motors is? Okay. It's a little bit like a normal motor, but you can you you tell it 
to which position to rotate and it will go to exactly that position, it will stay there. And it's how much juice you give it that determines how far it goes. Uh, so it's, it's quite kind of good for precision things, like moving an arm up and down or, or things like that. Uh, but it also has a motor controller for, for like, I guess, normal motors. So you kind of can build your own little JavaScript robot with this thing. Uh, the Bluetooth module that's recommended is called HC05. Um, I won't go into much detail about it, but it's a very flexible module. You can kind of make it into different things. You can make it act as a an audio device, or you can make it act as a yeah different Bluetooth things. It would probably be possible for you to do uh, an iBeacon, for instance, this new Apple invention with it. So it it has Bluetooth features. So GPIO is, is normally what you normally use with, with uh, microcontrollers and it's, it means general purpose input output and what the GPIOs can do is uh, they can send power, um, they can receive or read a signal and um, normally they're digital but they can sometimes also be analog which means that they can, yeah, they can, they can also read how strongly you send power into them. Um, and then some of them are special, so out of the 44, there's also 26 of them that are, that support pulse width modulation. And what it means is that you can, you can make it turn on and off very, very fast. And with that, you can make, for instance, an LED go dimmer all the way down or all the way up. And it, it looks like the LED is actually dimming. But actually, all uh, I think all LEDs they actually are just flashing very very fastly. So you can by s by determining how long they're lit between every flash, then you can determine how bright it is. So you can turn it up and down like that. It has ADC pins, which I don't know what is. Then uh, at least the SPI and I2C are some more advanced ways to communicate with hardware that would normally require lots of pins. Like if you would have a display, you would normally have to use one pin per pixel if it was an analog display. Uh, I mean, uh, sorry, a, a monochrome display. Because you, you need to have like, okay, this one is on, this one is off, and so on. But if you want something more advanced to be able to send serial data or things like that, then, then you use uh, SPI right to see at least. And the other ones I don't know, but I'm, I'm, I'm here to give you a taste of it. So if you really like it, you know, then you can really dig into this thing. This is more like a sketch that you can use when you get started and you want to uh, figure out which ones actually support pulse width modulations and which don't and so. So this I think is called a pinout chart. Yeah. And so just plug it in and go. That's actually what I'm going to do now so that you get a little taste of how it, how it works. I don't know if you can see it from here, but something like that. So what I do now, let's see if I can go out of full screen here. Whoa, work. Is that there is something uh, very cleverly made. It's, an, it's a, a Chrome app. So the whole IDE that you use to work with Esperino is a Chrome app. So you install it in the Chrome App Store, you just search for Esperino, and then you have it. So in Chrome, you just open your apps, which actually took me a while to find now, <laughs> but it's here. I, they changed it some generations ago, and I don't use apps so much. But here, here you go. So the IDE 
and it looks much better now than it did a month ago. They've improved. So, what do we have here? So to the right is kind of your draft, and you can you can also save that as your source code. To the left is the what do you call it again? Uh, the run eval print loop. So when I connect to the Esperino now with this button here, and I choose the USB modem connector here, it actually supports Bluetooth as well. Um, but I haven't managed to figure that out. So it might be my soldering skills when I put on the Bluetooth module or something. But but that should be possible as well. So you can you can you can also like once you've hooked up this module to Bluetooth, you could be working with it wirelessly if you wanted to. So I connect to the USB modem and nothing happens. Hmm. There we go. Okay. So now I'm connected. Uh do you see anything to the left here? No, you don't, right? Yes, great. <laughs> Anybody know how to zoom into OSX because Com command line? Nope. Yeah, it's this this handmade program that doesn't work. Yeah. Sorry. Doesn't uh, doesn't look like it. Oh yes. Thank you. I should have believed you. UI mode normal. Okay. I don't want to touch that. Nice. Okay, now we everybody can see. So now I can just do what I'm used to in the uh, node console or in the in the web browser's uh, developer bar. I can just do like Wow, so this is quite cool. I mean, just this, right? Um, but the basic example I'm going to show you is here. So there is L is standing for lit here. So you set L to false, and then you run a set interval with an anonymous function. And inside that one, it toggles the L, just sets it to not what it was. So if it's false, it becomes true. If it's true, it becomes false. And then the global variable LED1 is available. And you write a 1 to this one. So is this the right? Yes, send to Esperino. So now in a perfect world. Yay! <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> this is the moment we've been waiting for. So... I wish I would have a much cooler demo, but I think just just because we are here now, why don't we make like another LED blink? Whoa. Those are yes, I think so. Yeah, the one and the two and the three. I think they're red, green, and blue in that order, which we're about to find out actually. Whoa. <laughs> huh? You want the blue as well? <laughs> so, okay, okay, come on now. Now we're coding together. You have to tell me now. Is the blue one supposed to sync with any of these or do something completely different? <laughs> Challenge accepted. Let's just see if I can figure out to do my coding well. Half the rate? Whoa, there. We already have the variable L. Oh wait, that's not gonna work. <laughs> oh right, right, yes. 
I, I thought it would be half the occurrence, but half the head. Yes, I'm with you. I'm with you. So now we take a. And this is the green that we're missing, right? I'm just going to call it G. Oh, thank you. Quite nice. <laughs> yeah, actually, if I had some paper, maybe it would look really cool now. If I try to. If you're trying to write to a D four or I. Uh, yes, I'm. I'm going to try it now because you asked me. Okay, this this still doesn't work. It still just looks like three different LEDs. But. <laughs> oh well. Um, well, let's try, and I can even do it here. So. You have a lot of subscribers, but each inner feature is a slot. So you can control each inner or widget from the inner fundamental. Yes, they're all uh, global variables that you can control. So you, you have your pins and everything available to, to use as JavaScript objects. <laughs> yeah, part of part of the reason I'm enjoying this so much is because you don't have to do everything the right way. I I don't have to write a module and I don't have to but actually aside from that, the you know how they made all the drivers is actually in a modular format. So it's quite I think it's quite n nice and easy to work with everything. <laughs> uh, actually, you can you can you can use any truthy or falsy value to the okay. LED, so you don't have to be picky about the type. So actually, it turns out that you can't do it with LED four, and if you try to see what it is, it's undefined. So. <laughs> I wonder what to do what would happen if I say <laughs> So this is actually a reference and this pin well Another thing that you don't normally see in JavaScript is um Binary numbers, so you can write in a binary format here, zero xb. This is actually uh, supported in the new um, new version, Harmony of uh, ECMAScript, but it's uh, not currently in most browsers, I think. But it's very handy here as soon as you want to start doing some serious bit banging and things like that. Right, I mean, this is uh, all I have, so if you have any questions, <coughs> shoot. Can you, do you, can you read, check something? Or what what y yes, it's, it's, it's actually, in fact, you can use an LED to also read light. And it, so you can see how bright a room is by reading the LED. I, not very precisely, but, you know, if you put a flashlight and take it away, it will detect that. So you could, for instance... If you want to do it very simply, you could have one LED just seeing if there is light in a room, and if there is, then turn on the other lights that it controls. You can do stuff like that. Um, there, is, there is also better ways to detect light, and there are sensors for almost everything. They're normally super easy to use. Oh. For example, have all of that the right function. Does it also have read or check space something? Wow. Uh, should there, uh, you, you, you also need to sometimes read from uh, the Yeah. You can uh, you can read it, it but turns out.
Yeah, I, I did an LED read here, and it returned false, and then I did it again, and it returned true. So, I, I don't know if my timing was right, but let's see. No. <laughs> no, it, it will explode. Yeah, I, you can, you can. Uh, let's let's uh, reset this code now, because uh, now we have a lot of set intervals going on. So if I would start doing this runtime, then m whatever I do will be overwritten at the next set interval that's uh, executed. Um, so enough with these. Oh yeah, yeah, how quick it is. Sure, and this can be 50. And let's go. That's actually good. <laughs> These are actually still uh, slow enough to perceive. I think normally you say that the eye can perceive 60 FPS, and that's uh, around 17 milliseconds, 16.666 or something like that. Um, so as soon as you go below that, then in theory, let's see then, 10. 15. They look solid now, but they are actually blinking. <laughs> yeah, you see it? Huh. Right. Um, so there was actually one example that is using these to, to do like dimming. I think maybe I can, do they have some Tutorial. No, that's not it. Oh, dagnabbit. Now I'm stuck in the tutorial. <laughs> hmm. Goodbye. Back? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I should have used that, yes. What? Is this this? But that's the delete button. Control D, Control C. Okay, but still, maybe it will still work. Let's see if you have. No, that's not where it is. Okay, this is. A, uh, sorry, guys, but there is an example where you can use the set timeout, and you can make it go up and down um, in intensity, pulsate, so to say. So it's basically using this, but then it's using another set timeout within it, so it decides how long it's on before it turns off until the next time that it does it. So that's how it works. And I think the smallest fraction of time is one millisecond, but I'm actually not sure. I think there's some ways to get it to do faster operations. Four. Hmm. Yeah, I, I trust you guys. Uh, it could also be special just because it's Esperino, so everything is a little different than normal JavaScript here. But um, as far as the compatibility goes, it goes quite a way. It's very similar to what we know as JavaScript, actually, which I think is very nice. So it's uh, that's I guess my summary is you know this is almost like normal JavaScript, and you get to learn microcontrollers. So just get yourself one board. I think it's like. 300 kroner or something like that. And uh, and also get some accessories, like there's some Arduino starter kits that you can use. So get some LEDs and some resistors and some engines and, or motors, sorry. <laughs> and just get going, you know, get started, uh, try to experiment with this, because it's uh, really fun. And uh, you don't have to write unit tests if you don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it at work instead.